Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this next video, first of all, I'd like to say thank you, Charles Tiggett, for t-shirts. This is one of them. I'll be wearing the rest next couple of videos. Nice t-shirts, man. Always appreciate it. Uh, this video is from a donation from uh, Genuine APBT. So thank you very much, my friend. Much appreciated. I'm going to cover a little bit on uh, Cunningham's dogs, Boomer and Redman. Uh, uh, Cottingham's were from the Carolinas. Uh, I didn't meet both of them. I think I met one, Durant, one time uh, in my travels. I didn't see any dogs directly from them, but I saw descendants of their dogs. And the Carolinas, in my day, was a hotbed for uh, pit bulls. And a lot of famous dogmen, a lot of heavy competition. Uh, that's where the original, or not the original, but uh, the uh, old family Red Nose were made popular. Uh, along with the Red Boy Dogs, uh, La Posse Dogs, you know, Bullet, and... Uh, Buster, the Jocko stuff, Mayday stuff, you know, Yellow John, Yellow, a lot of, lot of very popular, uh, very game, hard mouth dogs, you know, uh, people wanted the blood there, it spread out to different parts of the country and to the world, I've even seen some of it in, uh, Mexico years back, you know, and uh, Cunninghams were known for having very game dogs, those dogs were, uh, I want to say that particular strain, they were wild, meaning uh, kind of primal, you know, very vociferous, loud, screaming demons, kind of all around dog, smart too, they could be rough, cross they have they can have great mouth you know the red boy jocko cross one of the most popular ones you know uh boomer was a three-time winner one-time loser reportedly a very game dog he lost in long distance i think in the heat if i'm not mistaken he was sired by uh lanier's uh rex boy and rex boy himself was a two-time winner, P.O.R. Uh, that goes back to Whaley's. He was sired by Whaley's Red Eagle and Medlin's Ginger. Red Eagle was off of Red Boy and Cat, Bass's Cat. And Ginger was off of Red Eagle and Medlin's Crooked Tail, which goes back to Medlin's Outlaw. Also a very popular dog outlaw. Well known by a lot of dog men. And... Uh, Boomer's dam was uh, Swinson's North Carolina Rose, a champion, three-time winner. That Carolina Rose was, when we're talking about females, you know, she was uh, along the lines of popularity and production of some of the more famous females, you know, uh, like Honey Bunch, Dirty Mary, um, you know, at the time. Uh, maybe not as well known, but certainly a uh, uh, top producing female uh, this stuff is it's red boy stuff but when you have the whaley stuff and the medlin stuff or dogs like uh holland's grand champion bobo i think i have a, a picture of bobo in hold and my next project is a picture book and i'll include a lot of uh, dogs like bobo like uh alligator even uh, Anderson's Red Baron, you know, some dogs uh, doing what they do. Some of the photos are going to be rare. Uh, some maybe not seen in public before, but certainly not seen by a lot of people. And uh, that's my next project. And I'll include some of these dogs I'm talking about in that, in that book. And some of the other ones that weren't included in my last book, 
I'm going to put in there. The, the problem with not including a lot of pictures in my last book was the quality of the pictures. I think School Baby has figured out how to improve on that or at least Photoshop, do something about it. Anyways, uh, with my next project, I'll include a lot of those, a lot of the famous dogs and some of the ones I'm mentioning here. But as I was saying, these are, they're Red Boy dogs, but they're also a different line, say, of Teal's Jeff dogs. Not from Red Boy, related to Red Boy, but going on a different tangent. And uh, the the uh, traits are a lot of them are the same. And the good thing about this, just like any, if you want to call it line breeding, is they're not just straight red boy dogs. They're dogs that are related to red boy, so you retain the same traits, and you have the same blood, but it's different dogs, which just allow it allows you to to. Uh, continue with your breeding program or have different aspects of your breeding program that are not directly related or inbred or something like that and it's a it's a method that's been used a lot uh it it uh enhances what you already have or allows you like i said to continue forward with the same blood but different dogs and that's what a lot of these uh, Cottingham's dogs were, especially Boomer and uh, Red Man. They had the Red Boy in them, but they also have, uh, you know, the Medlin stuff, the Whaley stuff, which is related but different. So these dogs are, you know, like I said, they're world-renowned. Most noted for their heart, but that's not all they had. Some of them had a lot of ability. In fact, the down to uh big red uh i believe it was her uncle that was also in our area and he was just a good all-around dog all-around dog he could fight he had a lot of ability a lot of style uh could handle any situation just a top-notch dog i don't know what happened to him the guy who owned him got out of the dogs and uh i'm not sure if he lived a long time or if he was given away or sold or whatever but i was impressed with his ability and uh just his style and his intensity that's one thing the red boy dogs have is intensity and and intent good finish that they get you down and uh you know that's probably what made him popular when you cross it with the jocko stuff then you have uh you know uh you increase mouth and some bone structure and ruggedness, you know, like that, you know. Carolina's also where the termite blood became popular. Just a lot of good dogs, you know. But the Cottingham's were top dog men known for putting dogs in keep, you know, uh, conditioning very well and, uh, you know, going into everybody. So that's the makeup of Boomer. His son, Redman. <clears throat> was uh was uh by boomer and uh, also reportedly a very game dog and a champion uh sired by boomer he was out of uh Cottingham's ginger ginger was right off a of red boy and marlo's brandy girl and like i said in the past for me the red boy dogs the key to him is brandy girl so Redman uh, was a grandson of Brandy Girl. And this is a perfect case of putting that red boy together with the Whaley's Red Eagle and, uh, you know, Rex Boy and the Medlin's Outlaw stuff. You know, it's almost a guarantee when you, when you put that together, you're going to get something good. If you're using the right individuals, if you're using the dogs that retain the traits, exhibit the traits, and are able to pass them on, it's almost a guarantee you're going to get good dogs out of it. So Redman is a good example of the stuff that Red Boy was related to, which, not Red Boy himself, but predominantly that, crossed with a little bit of Red Boy through the Brandy Girl stuff. And again, Redman, you know, uh, reportedly a good dog, tough dog, game dog, you know, 
he uh, he uh, produced a dog called uh, Red Boy, Connie Ham's Red Boy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know the dam of Red Boy, but what is important to me is I had a dog na named Alex that I've talked about before, my dad's dog, you know, and I sold him to TVK. He matched in. He matched him into Cottingham's Red Boy, and won an hour twenty minutes. Both dogs expired after the show. Alex broke both of Red Boy's shoulders, but Red Boy didn't quit. That fight went an hour twenty minutes. Uh, I think Die Hard was the referee. She's a dog man from my days, back in the past. She had Champion Buster, a lot of the the uh, Chinaman stuff. She bred her own dogs, schooled them, raised them, schooled them, conditioned them. You know, good dog woman and a good person too. Uh, we had a lot of good conversations. She was knowledgeable, good handler, conditioner, all that, you know. And uh, Tito and the local boys, they they uh, conditioned to handle some, some of her dogs for her too. Uh, but she did some of her own dogs. Some of the offspring of uh, Red Man would be Boomer 2, who was out of uh, Cottingham Susie, uh, TVK's Buck, who became P.O.R., Littermate to Boomer 2 out of Sissy. Uh, another one was uh, Cottingham's Lady out of uh, Cottingham's Cover Girl. These are all uh, offspring off Red Man. Uh, Mountain Man's Spooky, not, not the... Grand Champion Spooky of Rebel Kennels. This is a different Spooky. But she was by Red Man out of uh, Durant Cottingham's Black Lady. And then uh, a reported four-time winner uh, would be uh, Champion Infamous. I, I wasn't able to verify whether he was champion or not. But he's listed as a champion. But I remember his name from back in the day. Uh, he was out of uh, St. Benedict's. Lindy, St. Benedict's or St. B, you know, very famous uh, dog man. Barney Fife was, was part of that team. I saw some of their dogs back in my day. Very good dogs, man. I mean, good top-notch dogs. Uh, Norman's Black Man would be another one off of Red Man out of Jones Mutt. And uh, these are just some of the, some of the offspring of uh, Red Man, who was a son of Boomer. So that stuff, again, I saw dogs bred down off of that. They were smart and could fight rough, uh, known for their intelligence, the ones I saw anyways. And uh, just rugged, rugged dogs. And that's what I'll say about a lot of that uh, blood, is they're rugged, very rugged. Almost impervious to pain and uh, good air, you know, good wind, very intense. And, uh, you know, they're an asset to, to uh, almost anyone's breeding program. I prefer to use the Red Boy stuff as a cross. Other people prefer to key on it and use other bloods as a cross like the Lapisse stuff or even Eli stuff. The Jocko, of course, you know. In my mind, when they cross the Red Boy to Jocko, you know, uh, through uh, Yellow John, you know. And the thing with Yellow John is he's he's not from the Brandy Girl stuff, but he's from a litter mate to Brandy Girl. So it's basically the same blood. And in my mind, at least, you know, you have very game dogs. Bred to very hard mouth dogs, put them together, and that's what you get. Hard mouth game dogs. That was my thought process, knowing the bloods of both and following the competitions. You know, Jocko, a four time winner. His brother uh, Argo was a three time winner who lost the Thrift Champion Bumper. You have Apple, uh, one of them, I forget it was Apple or their, their dam, uh, lost to Molly B. You know. Uh, Jocko, a great producer, you know, uh, termite, as I mentioned before.
those dogs were known for being rough a lot of them going to the stifle and again you might have some what would be considered rough dogs bred to the red boy stuff intelligent dogs if you want to put it that way and it just clicks kind of you know what one's lacking the other one has plus they share traits like finish you know ruggedness like that so the uh red boy stuff and you know including boomer and red man you know they were bred to to different bloodline not all of them were bred to the same different bloodlines but you have them crossed with jocko you have them crossed with the eli you have them crossed with the bullet stuff you have it crossed with the jeep stuff you know even later on i saw some uh uh red boy jocko stuff crossed with jeep blood you know very good dogs with some eli in there so uh, I think Boomer and Redman were two of their most popular dogs and also two of their best producers. And there's a host of them, you know. I didn't go through all the list and I didn't mention a lot of them. But some of the ones like Bobo you might not be familiar with or Medlin's Outlaw, you know. The Holland dogs, you know, Bobby Holland uh, had a lot of that stuff. Similar and related to Red Boy, but not Red Boy. And those dogs were just known for being insane, crazy, wild, game, game, game to the core. Vocal, you know. And it's just another way of of uh, using like bloodlines to get the same traits from dogs that are related, but not directly. And again, that area, like I said, was uh, very popular, you know. And it wasn't just that blood or the ones I mentioned, you know. They had some dogs who were more heavier on the Eli or like the Molly B stuff, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, different dog men had, would include different stuff, you know. Uh, the Chinaman stuff was out there. You know, Eli Carver, that kind of stuff. But at some point, when you have all these dogmen competing against each other and you have all these bloodlines, they're going to get mixed together. And I would bet that all of them were, you know. And probably other stuff was brought in, like the white blood or the Jeep dogs, you know. Or uh, maybe even some of the stuff from up north, the Kingfish, Zebo, Art stuff like that always going to have the kobe lightner blood there that's what bullet is you know that's a, a standard and a staple you know on on paper red boy goes back to that you know kobe stuff tight bred kobe stuff there are discrepancies people think he's ofrn i understand that how they feel that way because that was ofrn country and plus the way he looks you know red red nose you know and uh, uh, that could be a reason to click with some with the bullet stuff so well, you know. Uh, because of if he is OFRN, it clicks with the Kobe Lightner. If he is uh, Kobe, uh, the 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 bullet stuff is Kobe Lightner. So either, however, dogs are bred, you know, the bloodlines just have a natural way because how people breed them. To be either related or their bloodlines that kick, click together. Even if you have a bunch of fake peds rolling around. And a bunch of uh, unknowns or whatever. The dogs have a tendency to click with what they naturally click with in the past. And uh, you know talking about unknowns or fake peds and all that. That's one of the ways you could say. That stuff don't matter. Fake pet or unknown or whatever. Because if the dogs are sound, the dogs are tested, the dogs hold tra traits and retain traits and they have the ability to produce that unknown and the uh, uh, fake stuff doesn't matter because they're going to produce anyways. <coughs> Where people get it mixed up is they say, well, if you don't know how a dog's bred, you don't know how to breed it. That's not 
necessarily true. It helps if they're correct. It, and just from a from a integrity standpoint and honesty standpoint, you know, in my case, I believe you should have correct pets on your dogs. But if you're trying to trip somebody up by having not telling them what it is or faking it or unknown or whatever, you know, uh, regardless of what that unknown or fake is, if they can produce uh, anyways, they're going to produce for you too. And then from that point on, you just keep your pet straight. I've talked about this before. Uh, my point for bringing it up is, guys, don't get too caught up in that. You know, I like stuff straight too. I like people to be honest and have integrity and represent the breed honestly and, and truthfully. But that, that doesn't happen in a lot of cases. So that didn't discourage me from making my breedings or if someone told me, hey, your dog's not really bred that way, I didn't care. Because if you know how to breed dogs, that don't matter. It never has in that respect. If you have standards and follow them and you know how to breed dogs, you can take anything that's good and make it better. And then it's up to you to keep it straight and be honest. So the Red Boy dogs and the Whaley and Medlin and Holland dogs became very popular because of that. Because they have a prepotency to be able to produce. Because they hold traits that we admire and because they they have the ability to pass those traits on and like anything else there's good and bad i've seen some junky dogs bred like that that ain't worth squat that's standard too you're going to get that so if you follow the ones that are good you're going to have less of that and more good ones that's true too regardless of what anybody thinks or says that's what the records show and I'm a fact checker and I try to keep as many records and I love the history of it. And I go back and forth and check, uh, you know, competitions and, and uh, you know, as many stats as I can as far as, you know, uh, which litters worked and which breedings worked and how many were in the litter, you know. And through my time and beyond and before that you know the red boy stuff was just consistent and uh, uh people that that understood that and took notice of it continued with it and like i said that you know they have a whole there's a whole era where they had short wins a lot of long wins most of them were distance fights you had where they showed extreme gameness some of them quit. Some of them went two, three, four hours. You know, that crawling kind of scratching and desperate gameness like that. That's why people like it, because they exhibit that. Because no matter what anybody says, and we can debate any of the traits, you know, gameness is the foundation of the breed. That's what it's based on. It's the hardest trait to retain. Most dogs will quit. Some won't under any circumstances. So that's the, the level you try and reach. Or at least I did. And a lot of the people that I knew. And competitors in the past. And breeders in the past. That's the kind of level you, you want to get to. Where you consistently have dogs that don't quit. Doesn't mean they're all dead game. Doesn't mean they're desperately game and this and that. But at least if they do quit, you got to take everything out of them to make them quit. And that's one thing that I saw later on in my career is it wasn't that, that, that people were just breeding dogs that had quit. But those dogs had gone through a lot of shit before they quit. A lot of stress, a lot of scratches, a lot of, you know, pain and fatigue and all that before they quit whereas later on i started seeing dogs that were ranked and quit badly and quit in a short amount of time or quit because they bit hard got bit hard one time or quit because they ran a little hot you know that 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 to me is is 
where people get it in their mind, well, this dog quit and that dog quit and it's still produced. It's not the same thing. They're not even quitting the same way. They're quitting badly. It's not under adverse circumstances. And it wasn't after being fatigued and it wasn't over a distance. It wasn't after taking a lot of punishment. It was just they quit because they're, they're born curs and they had no heart, not even a little bit. And didn't have the ability to take pain and get a little hot, quit on top, run away, jump out, stuff like that. That's a whole different, even different way of quitting. So the red boy dogs and the turkey dogs, you know, and Medlin's outlaw and whaley and all that. Most of that stuff, the one thing, if people ask you, you know, what are they known for? Gameness, 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 gameness. You know, and they were, and like I said, under a lot of adverse circumstances. And then you had people where these dogs are, they may fall, fall down and try and get up and can't make it. Somebody call them a cur. You get them where they're, where they're trying desperately to get over and they get there on the 11 count instead of the 10 count, barely missed it. And people call them curs. They, they mean curs. Or so broken up. I'm talking about broken legs, broken back, stifles, you know, uh, uh, loss of fluids, body fluids, going into shock, can't go no more, unconscious, and they call them cursed. That's not. That's not. So that's what basically the red boy dogs are known for, along with that intensity and, you know, wild kind of mindset primal kind of mindset you know it's almost when the, when the dog is in that state of mind they're oblivious to anything that's happening around them they're oblivious to what they're taking what they're going through they're oblivious to the pain and fatigue and frustration those are the traits that the red boy stuff was known for and those were the traits that red man and boomer were known for and they were known to pass it on so hopefully you like this video. Uh, there's many, many more of red boy dogs, you know, uh, like Yellow John and Toro and, and uh, you know, uh, Gainey's JR and just tons of them, man. You have, you know, the red boy Jocko stuff with Grand Champion Rodney and you have uh, Mayday that has the red boy Jocko and the Bolio and, and uh, Tombstone and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of different directions you could go. The Assassin Blood, you know, Assassin 1 and 2, Assassinator, their dam, and it just, it just goes on and on. You could, you could have a video of any one of those dogs, and there would be enough information, if you could gather it all, to have a nice video or a chapter in a book, and all the, all the uh, competitors and the breeders that were involved with them. So I think it's a tribute to all that stuff that uh, people recognize their quality and continued with it, beginning in that area, the Carolinas, North and South Carolina, and then spreading out like a lot of good bloodlines do to the rest of the world. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again, Genuine APBT. Much appreciated. And uh, I got a couple of more videos coming up. I'm going to talk about uh, body structure, different body structures, and uh, maybe even a little bit on throat pulling. Thank you. Feel free to comment.